Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, this is a worm compost channel and I have this in my basement inside my house. And if you see kind of a, a little hole here, it is because I have a sneaky suspicion there might be a mouse in the basement. So I'm going to have to deal with that a little bit later. Um, so last time we looked in here, we fed them quite a bit of slow and fast food. So we, we might not need to feed a whole bunch today. So let me start digging. I can see the top of some apples here. Um, so let's, let's collect the food up. I have a little bin over here. And let's see if we have any kind of a, a worm ball going on. Looks like the apples, they're pretty slow food. So when I first started worm farming, I would not have thought that apples were a slow food. I mean, sure, you know, avocado pits, yeah, definitely. But I would not have thought, I mean, I would have thought that apples, because they're squishy, that they would have gotten into them quite a bit. So one of the things I want to discuss today is this DIY system or maybe other DIY systems. And um, anybody that has a stacked system, whether it's a professional one or a, you know, homemade one, ring in on this. Sometimes it, ble it sometimes acts like three different bins or how many ever layers you have rather than you know just one single bin like I see with my other stuff. Um, which I think maybe makes them breed faster because they don't know that they're in a higher population and then that kind of makes them breed faster which makes the food go away faster. And it's only really the you know, when we look through the different layers that you see how many worms really are in these systems. And let's see, I've got an avocado shell here, a big one. Sometimes we'll get a worm ball because they like to be all snuggly inside that avocado shell. Nope, none today. All right, still dig in here a little bit. So it looks like we have quite a bit of apple. But one of the things I wanted to test today was the pH of the apple. And I have my little handy dandy pH strips right here that we can check. I just uh, buy these on Amazon. It goes from a pH of zero up to 14 and that pretty much covers the whole range. They're not super accurate, you know, like, like you would need for cooking or whatever, but it's good enough for this. So I figure if we use the juice of the apple, just to kind of get an idea of what the pH is. And then you just match it up with the colors and it looks like it might be right under four of a pH, which is pretty acidic. So that might be why you don't see a lot of, of worms getting in there, you know, right away. Let's, let's check the other one. So it looks to be about the same, that kind of uh, pale green color at the top is usually about four. So let's take these guys out. And let's see if there's anything else in this bin. Looks like they're doing a really good job on the bedding here. And, but the food, only the apple seems to be left at this point. So we might need to get them something a little faster that they can eat. I didn't have a lid on the bin because it was a little wet last time. And now it seems a little dry. We're down to, you know, like 45% humidity in the basement right now. So that might be my cue that I'm going to have to start either feeding much wetter food or I'm going to have to start adding a little bit of water. So let me get me some. Let me go get some water. Okay. Now I just do this a little bit at a time and, you know, combined it in. I know a lot of people like sprayers. Uh, I don't know. Mine, mine, mine broke like a year ago and I never replaced it. The worms seem to have been fine with me doing this, but you do really have to be a little bit more delicate with it if you use like a cup like this. And make sure you're not just pouring it in, make, making sure that you're completely rummaging through and making sure that you haven't overdone it. All right, I think that'll be good for right now. I think we've got enough bedding. We can let that ride for a little bit longer. I'm gonna put the food back in because I don't think this level is gonna need any more food. All these apples um, is definitely enough that we don't have to add more. One of the things I was gonna do is I'm gonna break this fresh apple up and check the pH of a fresh apple. So we know an apple that's in the, in 
you know, the middle of rotting is about four, but what is a regular apple when it's fresh? Kind of have to squish it a little bit, get some juice. And then let's look at the color now. Interesting, it's still about four. So maybe that is one of the reasons that red wigglers and European night crawlers aren't big fans of getting into apples. All of the other bin critters need to get into them first before the worms can get into them. All right, let's look at the next layer down. If you want to see more of my worm farms, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. In case you're wondering, yes, there probably are worms underneath there, but I put it in a motor tray when I put it behind me over there so that I manage to capture all the worms and we don't lose anybody. So we, we fed this layer as well last time and gave them some bedding. So let's see what they've been up to. Moisture looks much better down here than it did above. Looks like the potato peels maybe have given up. They were growing and trying to grow into potatoes last time. But yeah, so that looks pretty good. We didn't feed on that side. We just left the old, you know, potato peels over there. But this side, you can see nice finished castings right there on the top for us. So let's see what we've got. Ooh, yeah, good worms, look at that. Oh my gosh, look at those good babies. That is like a solid ball. It's probably like a half a pound of worms. Look at that. And you can tell that all the different kind of worms are all there. You've got the red wigglers, the European night crawlers, and those really dark skinny ones are the blue worms. Looks like we've got a good cross section of the population as well. Looks like we've got some little worms and big worms. I may have just interrupted their family reunion. All right, let's put that over there. Let's see what else we've got. We've got a big avocado pit here. Looks like maybe the top dried out quite a bit and most of the worms came down here because it is nice, nice and wet down here. So this, this end looks like it might be able, or this side, nope. This layer looks like it might be able to uh, sustain a little bit more food here. But uh, I'm gonna put those worms back. And let's look at the bottom layer. Maybe we'll give them a little bit of food, maybe get the moisture going if they need it down there. So let me grab the next layer. All right, well, this is interesting. I don't normally see real big worms down here. These aren't real big, but I, I think what happens is the hole is so small in here that worms crawl down here when they're little and then they kind of get stuck. Every once in a while, I will take um, everything that's down here and move it to an upper layer so that we can get um, the worms moved around. So just in case they're stuck down here, you know, in case they want somebody else to play with, that kind of thing. Doesn't look like they're getting really good moisture down here like we typically see. So let me get them some food and then maybe that'll help. A little bit of food, a little bit of bedding, and then that should make this um, lower level a little bit better. All right, I've got some paper and leaf bedding that's been resting for a couple of weeks. If you wanted to see my recipe for um, bedding, I can uh, put that link in below. That doesn't normally include leaves, but it's leaf season here in Illinois, and why wouldn't you? All right, let's see. Let's give these guys some more stuff to eat. So uh, this side, or this bottom part doesn't have a lot of worms, so I'm not going to give them a ton of food. But, you know, a little bit of cantaloupe, that's not too much for them. That should totally be alright. Okay, then let's reassemble. Since these guys didn't really have a lot of food left... Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put all those chunks back in the bottom. And here you guys going, you're supposed to put the chunks in the bottom, man. Or rather, I didn't hear you, and that's why I forgot. All right, and then I'm just going to add a little bit of food over here. Kind of boost this side a little bit. It seems like there's quite a few worms right in here, so we'll give them a little bit. Those will sprout if I'm not, you know, if I get down here in a couple of weeks, I'll just flip them over. It's not a big deal. 
All right, so there we go. We've got the stacked bin all put back together, and I do have a lid that I kind of loosely put over the top of this so that the moisture can stay a little bit better than it was when we came in here to begin with. If you like this DIY system, I have a playlist that I will link right over there. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video right over here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.